I, I had a letter this very morning from a seven-year-old girl, a sweet you know, letter from this child who said he liked the program. And she ended the letter by saying, I like animals because they are very different. And I thought, yeah, she's hit it on the head. That's exactly why I like animals, because they are different. And the more different they are from us, the more I like it. Now, some people have said, occasionally they say to you about film, but it's all very well you doing a film about spiders, but, but what can they tell us about ourselves? And I thought, what a really self-centered remark <laughs> that is, you know. I'm interested in the spiders precisely because they don't tell us anything about ourselves, because they tell us about a completely different way of being alive and solving life's problems. And that's what I find absolutely fascinating about that. And that's why I find this series so interesting. And in a way, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it, I, I welcome it. it. It wasn't my idea, it was Steve's idea. Uh, I welcome it because it's an, a little addition to the sort of repertoire of formulae that we have for making natural history program. This is new. This is not looking about the animal, how, uh, how it lives in the wild, not even how I managed to film this animal living in the wild. This is about a whole series of different questions which people have thought about, about animals, like, as someone was saying, what, did hippos really sweat blood, as, as the classic, classical natural history people made? And what was the story of that? But how was it discovered? How were uh, the first hippo brought to Europe, for example? Uh, these were interesting questions. And, 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 and that kind of sidelong look at animal life um, is what is, makes natural curiosities as successful as they have been over these past two series. And are these questions that you're constantly thinking, like if you're traveling or if you're working on another project, are they things that you note down? Are they things that you think, one day I must invest in It becomes that? competitive. Because there are, what, how many of us, Steve? There are three, four of us uh, who, who are involved of, on the production side, all of whom are thinking up ideas and trying to get our idea into, into the final mix. Um, and... Uh, uh, well, <coughs> so there are lots of minds thinking about that, and uh, and it's nice when one wins. That, as I say, I, I was actually I th I thought of the flea. I said we've got to get the flea in somehow, and I think it was uh, I don't know whether it was Steve or one, or or, or, or uh, Shamila, one of them, and actually said we could pair it because of this thing about a false record it's supposed to have, which puts them in the mind of uh, of, of linking it with the other thing. Um, are there any animals that you haven't yet investigated or captured on camera that you are on the list that you, you really want? Oh, we've to? got a list, just in case anybody's <laughs> wondering about the next series. <laughs> yes, we've got a list. Yes, yes, we've got another six. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Which I, I presume you can't yeah. say in case we <laughs> yeah. steal the idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but over your career, there must have been um, kind of creatures that you wanted to look at more in depth or perhaps areas of the animal kingdom that you think, oh, I still really, really want to go deep into that? Yes, uh, but also I'm, I'm very interested in the way, um, the way we human beings have, have approached these strange animals, right from the sort of, for the last 500 years, for example. Um, and uh, I mean, the story of, of, of why the hippo was thought to sweat blood, which is a story in the classic literatures in, you know, of, of uh, 2,000 years ago. The, the, the first natural histories refer to this animal sweating blood. Um, and why? What could that mean? And the answer is, strangely enough, I mean, I didn't know the answer to that. It was somebody else's idea. And you look into it, and what actually happens is that the animal does, in effect, produce stuff from the skin which is, which is dark colored and, and looks like blood. And actually it's a kind of sun cream because the hippo is, is you know, with no, no, no fur to protect it from the sun, no hair. So it's got this naked skin. And actually it comes out mostly at night uh, for, to feed on grass. And precisely because of the sun, it spends most of the day in the water where it's safe and it's not being roasted by the sun. But it does have special secretion glands, special glands all over its skin, which when it first comes out in, in the uh, late sunshine, produces this strange, slimy stuff. And, and we went to Berlin in the zoo 
um, and, and uh, talked to a keeper who had ever seen it. And we actually filmed it happening. So it was, it was interesting. Do you still get a thrill when, that, when it's something new that you're, you're newly discovering? Do you still get that real adrenaline? Yes, up? I think it's, it's yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I mean gosh, it'd be awful if you were bored, silly, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> Definitely. I want to ask you very, very briefly about um, your kind of questioning nature and whether you think we ask why enough or how. Uh, well, I don't, suppose, I don't think it's necessary to everybody to ask questions. Um, and I, I, like the next man or woman, can, can sit and very happily watch things doing just birds wheeling through the sky. But if you watch birds wheeling through the sky, if you watch starlings assembling uh, and, and their clouds, um, that's beautiful in itself, and it's a pleasure in itself. But what adds to that pleasure is to try to work out how on earth the starlings manage to fly in that kind of way. So that the questions come, I suppose they've probably come after the, the first fascination. It's a first you're fascinated, and then you say, how or why? Um, and that doubles your fascination. I've heard rumours that of all the places you've been, your favourite place around the entire world is Richmond upon Thames. That's correct. That's true. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Now, just from being at Richmond Rugby Club, I wanted to make sure it was true, and I can take it back to them proudly. <laughs> that is it. It's actually true because actually, when you come to it, what's about place is the people that live there, <coughs> and my family has lived there for a long time. That's why. Verified that one. I don't, uh, get, don't get a reduction for the rates on that, but never mind. <laughs> um, we have a question down at the front, just here. Sorry, I'm just deliberately pe picking people here. I'm sure if you really shout, horrible. I can hear you. <laughs> I can shout. <laughs> I'm Kate Bulkley, I'm a journalist. So, what animals didn't make the cut? In other words, you know, what ones didn't get that the directors said you said yes and they said no and. Were there any sort of ones I you thought, ah, yeah. we can't figure out a way to make this work? There's a whole, whole list of them, actually, and I can't think of a single one. <laughs> um, but, well, almost anyone, really, you know, um, one that's coming, for example, is, is what is the function of a camel's hump? Does it store water in it, or doesn't it? You know? I'm not telling you, you've got to wait the series. <laughs> that's it, later you on in the series. You've just rendered episode four redundant. <laughs> No the, no, the answer is that it doesn't store water, in fact. It stores fat, so it's, it's a food source. But, uh, but finding out about that and finding out... And finding out you find out extraordinary things in these programmes because they, the, the research team discovers that, in fact, there's a bloke who's living in, in the West Country who's got like a dozen camels on the place. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that. And, and you go down there, and it's, it's as though, oh, yeah, that, we're that ferry down there, he's got the camels, you know. <laughs> and, and, and nobody seems the least surprised. I was amazed. But he's got these wonderful camels. Is there anything in particular you really want to understand that no one's resolved oh, yet? Oh, yeah, oh, gosh, yes. Millions and <laughs> millions and millions. You, you'll be surprised, you know. Even simple things we don't know. For example, well, it's a, a plant example, oak trees. There are about half a dozen species of oaks in, in, in Europe, right? And you can get two species that live exactly alongside one another, exactly the same soil, exactly um, the same drainage, exactly the same nutrition, and they have different shaped leaves. Different species of oaks have different shaped leaves. Now, it's not just to do with drips or anything like that. Nobody knows. You ask a botanist, you know. Yes, I know you can tell that that's this species and that's that species for the shape of it, but why are the leaves shaped differently? See if you get an answer. <laughs> I'll do that, thanks.